Um, I want to start by asking you the same questions I asked our witnesses last week, and that is that based on what you know now, including the recent Justice Department indictments, do you agree there is clear evidence uh, that supports the conclusion that uh, there was those who planned and coordinated the attack on the Capitol on January 6th? Does everyone agree with that? Yes, no? We are seeing indications from our charging documents of people that coalesced together before and made some plans. Okay. So everyone is a yes on this? Do someone want to say if they're a no? <laughs> I don't want to call on everyone. Yes. Are you all a yes? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, then would you agree that it involved white supremacists and extremist groups, the planning? Is everyone a yes on that? And I just say that we're seeing a wide range of involvement um, and still a lot left to be identified, right? A lot of these. No, does it involve white supremacists and that's what I'm asking? Some. An extremist group. Some. And was the, uh, was the event not planned by Antifa? At this point, we have not identified a specific individual that we've charged associating or self identifying with Antifa. Okay, thank you. And would you all agree that what happened was a highly dangerous situation that had the potential to be much worse if it wasn't for the heroic actions of the frontline officers? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, General Walker, um, I'm going to start with you. I wasn't going to start here, but I am after what I just heard. Um, so Chief Conti had said that he was stunned at the response from the Department of the Army uh, when former Police Chief Sund requested assistance from the Guard. Um, what's your reaction to what Conti said? Uh, were you frustrated on that call as well? Y yes, I was. Uh, Senator Globachar, I was, I was frustrated. I, mm -hmm. I was just as stunned as uh, everybody else on the call. And I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, that with the National Guard, it is much better to um, prepare them and call them into action and have a plan, which I know that uh, I, I heard from um, uh, Mr. Celestinus that they people tried to do, they called the chief, they called people and said, do you want to have the guard mobilized? And there was a discussion between you and Sund uh, leading up to January 6th in which this was discussed and you didn't get a clear direction to have them mobilized. Is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. So, so I talked to, to Chief Sund on Sunday. I talked to him Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we talk. We're friends. Mm -hmm. I've known him for a long time. So Thanks. on Sunday, I asked him, are, are you going to request D.C. National Guard help, and if you do, I need it in writing. It has to be formal because the Secretary of Defense has to approve it. He told me he, he was not allowed to request a support, and I asked him if he wanted me to share that, and he said, no, I can't even ask you for the support is what he told me. Mm -hmm. But he did say, but if I do call you, uh, will you be able to support me? I said, yes, but I have to get approval from the Secretary of the Army and ultimately the Secretary of Defense because it's a federal request. Exactly. And so as we've heard from Chief Sun last week, um, he had been denied by the Sergeant at Arms, and that's a subject for um, last week. But the subject for today is, given all that, and we know we would have been in much better shape if they'd been called in ahead and if he'd had authority, but now we're to the day. And it is 2.22, and you are on the phone with them, and you're asking um, uh, for this authorization, uh, which you felt it was unusual to get. Is that right? Unusual the, that you... I thought the delay was unusual. Yes. And, and, and so we were already in support of the Metropolitan Police Department. And when the Metropolitan Police Department left the traffic control points, what I wanted to do was take those guardsmen and move them to the Capitol immediately. Be, and my logic was we were still in direct support. We would have been in su support of the Metropolitan Police Department, who was supporting the United States Capitol Police at that point. So I just keep imagining the scene. The whole country, the whole world is seeing this on TV. You've got the police line breached at this moment. Uh, you have, you have uh, smashed windows. You have uh, insurrectionists going through the police lines. You are on the phone. Everyone is seeing this on TV, and they're not immediately approving your request. And in your recent testimony, you just said, hey, I could have gotten them on those buses and ready to go. Is that correct? That is correct, Senator. 
And as you just testified in response to Senator Peters, uh, you believe that would have made a difference to have them at the perimeter in a sooner point. And I know that the p people in charge of capital security felt the same. Yes, ma'am. And so you could have had them there earlier, hours earlier, if it had been approved. And um, then you had them on the bus, and so they were actually sitting on the bus for a short period of time, right, waiting, because you thought, well, they've just got to honor the request. Is that how your head was working? So you actually put them on the bus so they were ready to go, but you couldn't let the buses go? Y yes, Senator. I, I just came to the conclusion that, it, that eventually I'm going to get approval, and I didn't want, and I, at that point, seconds mattered, minutes mattered and I needed to be ready to get them there as quick as possible. So I already had District of Columbia National Guard military police vehicle in front of the bus to help uh, get through any traffic uh, lights. Mm -hmm. So we were there in 18 minutes. I, I, 18 I arrived minutes. at 1720. Okay. So, yeah, and they were sworn in as soon as they got there, and they made a difference, according to the Capitol Police. Well, according to a lot of us, and I, I just <laughs> keep thinking of the hours that went by and uh, the people who were injured and the officers whose lives were changed forever. A lot has been reported about the quick response force that was waiting at Andrews Air Force Base to be deployed to D.C. just in case. Now that force was set up uh, as additional troops to support the Guard's traffic control uh, mission is needed. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And the quick response force couldn't be deployed to the Capitol immediately once the violence began because they were not outfitted for riot control. Is that right? No, ma'am. They, they were outfitted. So, so yep. the quick reaction force was District of Columbia Air National Guard Security Forces Squadron. Most of those guardsmen are law enforcement officers in their civilian positions. Got it. So, so they, were pro they were ready to go, and they were outfitted with all the equipment that they needed. And they were out at Andrews. They were at Andrews. And, and I just took it upon myself to move them um, without permission. I just moved them to the armory so they would be closer as well. Okay. And who was on that conversation with you? Um, you mentioned from the, from the Defense Department. I know who the, was on there from the police in D.C. So Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, he was, the chief, uh, he was in charge of operations for the Army. The director of the Army staff was on the phone, was on the call, Lieutenant General Pyatt. There were other um, senior civilian leaders from the United States Army and other high-ranking general officers were on the call as well. Okay. Um, and do you remember who was mostly talking about the optics, the questions that Senator Peters asked you and their concern about that? Yes, so during the phone call with, uh, with the District of Columbia National, the District of Columbia uh, leaders, the Deputy Mayor, Chief Son, Dr. Rodriguez, who was talking about optics, were General Flynn and General Pyatt. And, and they both said it wouldn't be in their best military advice to advise the Secretary of the Army to have uniformed guards members at the Capitol during the election confirmation. Thank you. Mr. Salaeus, um, could you uh, explain uh, why uh, they would say such a thing? I know you were not on the call, and uh, you were the one that they sent here on behalf of the Defense Department, but you were not on the call. And so do you have any idea why this delay occurred uh, when, as uh, Senator Peters has uh, well pointed out, it didn't occur in other incidences? Uh, Senator, as you point out, I was not on the calls, any of the calls. Uh, we know that. Uh, okay. That's why I spent my time talking to someone who was. Right. Um, however, Senator, in preparation for the hearing, I have had the opportunity to talk to General Walker. I've had the opportunity to talk to General Pyatt and other general officers on the Army staff. I've also had the opportunity to talk to Secretary McCarthy in preparation for the hearing so that I could understand the details of the Okay. So just if you could answer my questions, there's so many of my colleagues waiting, um, why this happened. General Pyatt told me yesterday that he didn't say anything about optics. He maybe he meant he didn't use the word optics, or yes. are you saying that General Walker, who just testified that they were concerned about this, is wrong, or that? General Pyatt told me yesterday, Senator, that he did not use the word optics. 
I think that what, I'll let General Walker answer this, but I think what he's talking about is the general concern of that um, was that they were more concerned about how this would appear and it was in their best advice. And I guess what bears out his testimony is that they did not send the National Guard there for hours. They didn't give the authorization for him as he waited with his troops to go over to the Capitol. Senator, in, in, in fairness to the committee, General Pia is not a decision maker. The only decision makers on the 6th of January were the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of the Army, Ryan McCarthy. It was a chain of command from the Secretary of Defense to Secretary McCarthy to General Walker. That was the chain of command. There's lots of staff that was involved in obviously having discussions, but to be clear, on that day, that was the chain of command. Just could I give General Walker, I think we should give him a, a moment to respond here, and then I'll be done. Yes, Senator. So, so the chain of command is the President, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of the Army, William Walker, Commanding General, District of Columbia National Guard. Can I, can I just make a correction? Mm -hmm. I said Lieutenant General um, Mike Flynn. It was Lieutenant General Charles Flynn. Got it. I'm sorry. Sorry. I just right. wanted to correct that. Okay. But, uh, but there were people in the room with me on that call that heard what they heard. Okay. We'll have to follow up with more questions. I appreciate your testimony. Thank you.